In this second tutorial on binomial coefficients, we're going to learn about an important result, which will allow us to find the values of the binomial coefficients much faster. Now, we can see in the lower half of the screen here that I have three binomial expansions, and in just a minute, we'll see how to quickly evaluate each of the binomial coefficients that we see here. Now, in our previous tutorial on binomial coefficients, we learned how to calculate binomial coefficients using the formula that we have in the upper right-hand corner of the screen here. So throughout this tutorial, I'm assuming you're comfortable in calculating binomial coefficients. If you're not, I would strongly suggest you start by watching that tutorial before watching this one. The result we learn about here is the following. The binomial coefficient n, k, is equal to the binomial coefficient n, n minus k, where k is a positive integer between 0 and n. And I'll go ahead and box that result. This result looks much more complicated than it actually is. So to illustrate what this is actually saying, let me give you some examples. Let's say we're dealing with the binomial coefficient 7, 2. Then this result is telling us that the binomial coefficient 7, 2 has to equal to the binomial coefficient 7, 7 minus 2, so that would be 7, 5. And by all means check with your calculators, but if you calculate the binomial coefficient 7, 2 as well as 7, 5, then you'll find that that equals to 21. Another example could be the binomial coefficient 8, 3. Then what this result is telling us is that it equals to the binomial coefficient 8, 8 minus 3, so that would be 8, 5. And again, go ahead and check for yourselves, but both of those binomial coefficients are equal to 56. Now you may be thinking that's all very nice and well, but how does that help us to calculate the binomial coefficients in our expansions? Well, here's the idea. What this result is really telling us is that the values of the binomial coefficients are the mirror images of each other across the middle of the expansion. So for instance, the binomial coefficient 4, 0 has to equal to the binomial coefficient 4, 4, since they're the mirror images of each other across the middle of the expansion. Similarly, the binomial coefficient 4, 1 will be equal to the binomial coefficient 4, 3, since they're the mirror images of each other across the middle of the expansion. And the same could be said for the other two expansions. Indeed, the binomial coefficient 5, 0 will have to equal to the binomial coefficient 5, 5. 5, 1 will be equal to 5, 4 and 5, 2 will be equal to 5, 3. Last but not least, looking at this last expansion, 6, 0 will equal to 6, 6. 6, 1 will be equal to 6, 5. And finally, 6, 2 will be equal to 6, 4. So we can already see that thanks to this result, we'll often end up with just half of the binomial coefficients to calculate. But there's more. Using this result, we can point out two special cases. The first is the following. The binomial coefficient n, 0, which, according to the result we have here, equals to the binomial coefficient n, n, will always be equal to 1. And I'll go ahead and box that result. Now, what that's actually telling us is that the first binomial coefficient, as well as the last binomial coefficient in any binomial expansion, will always be equal to 1. So without even thinking, we can go right ahead and state that each of the first and last binomial coefficients in our expansions are equal to 1. So let's just add that. We have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1 there. Done. And I should also say that if we wanted to, we could quickly prove this result. Indeed, regardless of the value of n, the binomial coefficient n, 0, equals to factorial n over factorial n minus 0 times factorial 0. Since factorial 0 equals to 1, this turns into factorial n over factorial n, which equals to 1. So the first and last coefficient will always be equal to 1. Now, the second special case that is definitely worth knowing is the binomial coefficient n1, which, according to the result we have here, equals to the binomial coefficient n, n minus 1, will always be equal to n where n is the power to which we're raising the binomial. So for this first expansion, n would be 4, for the second it would be 5, and for the last one we have here, n would be 6. So basically, what this result is telling us is that for any binomial expansion, the second coefficient as we go from left to right will always be equal to the second coefficient as we go from right to left, and they will both always equal 
to the power to which we're raising the binomial. So for the first expansion, we can just go ahead and say that 4, 1 is equal to 4, and 4, 3 equals to 4. For the second expansion we have here, without even thinking, we can go ahead and state that the coefficient 5, 1 equals to 5, and 5, 4 is also equal to 5. Finally, for the third expansion we have here, since the power to which we're raising the binomial is 6, without even thinking, we can go ahead and state that 6, 1 equals to 6, and 6, 5 equals to 6. And once more, if we wanted to, we could prove that result quite easily. Indeed, the binomial coefficient n1 equals to factorial n over factorial n minus 1 times factorial 1. And that equals to n times factorial n minus 1 over factorial n minus 1, where I've used the fact that factorial of 1 is just 1. And we can see here that we can cancel out these factorials of n minus 1, which just leaves us with n. So the second coefficient as we go from left to right will always be equal to the second coefficient as we go from right to left, and they will always be equal to the power to which we're raising the binomial. And so we see that thanks to these results, the number of binomial coefficients we actually have to calculate isn't that much. Indeed, for this first expansion here, we can see that the only one we really have to calculate is this middle coefficient here, this 4, 2. And by all means, check with your calculator or use the binomial coefficient formula, but if you calculate it, you should find that it's equal to 6. Similarly, in the second expansion we have here for a plus b raised to the power of 5. Since the two middle coefficients are equal, we only have to calculate 1. And again, by all means check, but if you calculate the binomial coefficient 5, 2, you'll find that it equals to 10. And so the coefficient 5, 3 is also equal to 10. Last but not least, looking at the expansion of a plus b raised to the power of 6, we can see that we have the middle coefficient that we have to calculate, this 6, 3, and since the coefficients 6, 2 and 6, 4 are the mirror images of each other across the middle of the expansion, we only need to calculate one of them. And by all means check, but if you calculate the binomial coefficient 6, 2, you should find that it equals to 15. So the binomial coefficient 6, 4 is also equal to 15. Finally, calculating the middle coefficient 6, 3, we find that it's equal to 20. And there we have it. We've just seen how these results provide us with some great shortcuts for calculating binomial coefficients in binomial expansions. In our next tutorial, we'll start working through typical exam style questions in which we have to write all the terms in a binomial expansion. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.